When it comes to testing your main bonding conductors, there's a few things we need to know. BS7671 doesn't go into massive detail about main protective bonding conductors. It gives a little bit of guidance, mainly on size and uh, where the connection should be. So the uh, first thing you need to check out is your type of earthing system. Is it TT, TNS, TNCS or another type of system? Because that does affect the size. Basically, 7671 tells us that like, except for PME supplies, the bonding conductor should not be less than 6mm squared. Um, there's more guidance on that in BS7671. Not, not a lot, but like I say, it's, um, the cross-sectional area should not be less than half the cross-sectional area of the earthing conductor, is what BS7671 says. But generally not less than 6mm. But generally, all new cable, all new installs in the UK, they're going to be putting 10mm cable in, 10mm squared green and yellow cable. Uh, one of the reasons is because if it is a PME, a TNCS earthing system, that has to be at least 10mm squared. That's because, like I mentioned in the previous video, you might be getting neutral currents appearing on the system for a short while. So they have a slightly larger cross sectional area to deal with that possible issue. What else do we know? Um, the guidance tells us that, that the connections should be within 600 millimeters of the gas meter on the consumer side or of where the, the uh, pipe enters the building. The, the connection should be within 600 millimeters or wherever practicable. Um, the clamp should be to BS951, that's your earth clamp. And how long should the bonding conductors be? Well, there's no maximum length really because it depends on the size of the insulation. And that insulation needs to be bonded. So you have to work for the insulation. But if it's a particularly long run, you might have to use a larger size cross-sectional cross area cable. Um, you often can't see one end of the bonding conductor to the other. So if it's your gas pipe, often your gas pipe is in with your meter cupboard. That's quite often the case. And you can see it's a couple of foot, but it might be 20 meters away or more. Same with your water. So we have to do a, um, a test. We can't do like an R1, R2 test, obviously, because we've only got one conductor. So we can only do an R2 test. I'm going to go through that in the next video. Most important thing, though, is the insulation has got to be isolated because we are disconnecting protective bonding conductors so that makes the installation dangerous. There's a potential that these this pipework could raise in potential and cause a shock hazard. So the installation has to be switched off. It has to be switched off at the fuse board. Completely dead, not just switch off this the circ one circuit. You have to isolate the entire installation for this testing. So what do we need to think about when we're testing our main protective bonding conductors? Well, the first thing is, what are we actually testing? In this instance, we're testing the bonding connections between the gas and water pipes and the main earthing terminal. Generally, gas and water in the UK domestic. I mean, it could be oil pipes, it could be structural steel, it depends what you've got. But the most common are the connections to the gas and water. So this is what we're actually testing. If the protective conductor, the bonding conductor, is continuous from the main earthing terminal to the bonding clamp and to the pipe work. Now, because we're disconnecting bonding conductors, we need to isolate the installation. That's the first thing we've got to do because we're moving the bonding to the building. That, that could mean that this pipe work could, under fault, raise to a dangerous potential. So the way that we stop that from happening is isolate the entire installation, switch it off. Follow your safe isolation procedure and lock it off. Right, so the installation is isolated and we know what we're testing. We're testing the bonding connections between the gas and the water. Now, how far are these apart? The gas or water pipes could be right next to the consumer unit. You could visually check there. You can see that there's a connection at the MET and you can see that there's a connection at the bonding clamp. And if they're nice and tight, you know you've got good continuity. If you try to take a, a, a low arms reading there, you're going to get 0, 0.00 because it's such a small run. But if these are further away from each other, many metres, the R2 test is the test that we need to use. 
the Wonder League test. So we're ready to start doing our testing. We've got a suitable meter that can test low ohms. We've got our R2 Wonder Lead. First of all, we need to know how to use these, this meter and the R2 Wonder Lead. And we've got to null out the test leads. There's not a lot of test lead there. That could be many meters, which is going to skew your readings. All we want to do is get a reading of this conductor here, the bonding conductor. So we null out the test leads, connect it together to the R2 Wonder Lead. Null it out, not, not, not. So we know the test leads are nulled out. We connect one end to the pipework or the clamp and the other end to the end of the disconnected bonding conductor. We've got to disconnect it because we don't want to be reading other bonding conductors as well. We just want to know that this conductor is continuous and we do that by disconnecting at one end. So if the one end of our bonding conductor disconnected from the MET, we put our probe on there, we've got our clamp on the um, protected bonding clamp, or on the pipework, we press our button, and we get a number, we get a test result, and we record that. What I like to do is do test this a couple of times. I like to test on the actual bonding clamp, and I also like to test on the pipework. We want to test if there's a good connection between the bonding clamp and the pipework, Sometimes pipe works painted, that could be clamped round a painted pipe, you're not getting a very good connection. So it's good to test the pipe work and to the clamp, making sure you're getting a good connection. Record your reading, and then before you do anything else, reconnect this bonding conductor to the main earthing terminal. We've reconnected our bonding conductor back into the main earthing terminal, and we're happy that's nice and tight. And so we can go away and look at our results now and see if we're happy with them and see if it matches what they should be for the exist for the installation. So what have we got? Well, you need to consider a couple of factors. The size of the cable, the bonding conductor, what size is it? Is it a 6mm? Is it 10mm? Is it even bigger? And what is the length of the run? We've got our value, we've got a reading, we have to work out if that reading is acceptable compared to what we've tested against. And we've tested a length of cable at a particular size. So we've tested 10 millimeter squared copper cable and we've tested say 20 meters or so. Is that reading about right for what we've got? The only guidance we got on numbers is from guidance note three. It says that the reading should be around about 0.05 or less for your main protective bonding conductors. But again, that depends on what the length of that cable is. You might have a longer run of cable you might have to say it could be 50 meters for example that's going to be in the range of about 0.09 so that might in indicate that you need to actually increase the size of your bonding conductors from 10 millimeter squared to 16 millimeter squared depends what it is but the important thing is to know that the length of the cable is corresponding to the metered reading that you've taken so if you've got a reading of 0.05 and you've only got two meters of cable, you know there's something not right there. You know you might have a poor connection at either end, you might have connected to some pain around the pipe or something. So this is why you need to take, take a few readings. If you start to get readings which you think aren't quite right, tighten up your connections, nip on the crocodile clip, get a nice tight connection, make sure you know the leads out so you know that you're getting a correct reading. You know that that 0.05 ohm is correct for the length of cable that you've got. If you've got a cable, say if you've got 10 meters of cable, that would be about 0.01. If you've got 100 meters of cable, it'll be about 0.18. So the reading that you get, you can work out using the on-site guide appendix I1 table. That gives you the, the resistance of copper. 10 millimeter squared copper cable is 1.83. And from that, you can work out the length of cable that you've got. So you don't just take the number down and write it down. You do have to consider, does that number, that does that ohms reading I've taken correspond to the length of cable I think I've got? Just to go through that again, you've got your meter reading, and we're checking to see if that meter reading is acceptable. Um, you've, you've checked your meter, you've checked your reading, you've checked your connections, you know that meter reading is correct. And... Um, you're getting 0.09. Now, what's the maths for that? That would be 50 meters worth of cable. 1.83 milliohms per meter. This is from the tables in the on-site guide for 10 millimeter squared copper cable. 
that's got a resistance of 1.83 milliohms per meter. So we times that by the amount of meters we've got, 50. Divided by 1,000 to get the units right from milliohms to ohms, we get 0 .0, 0 0.09. Um, the figure given in guidance note 3 recommends a reading of the order of 0 0.05. So it's not given any super accurate readings, is it, of the order? So it wants it to be around this kind of number, anything greater than 0 0.05. Uh, you might have to start thinking about increasing the bonding conductor size, as in here. So there we do the mass again, 1.03 milliohms per metre, times 27.35, divided by 1,000, 0.05. If you've only got 2 metres, again, 1.83 times 2 metres, divided by 1,000, 0.003. A lot of metres won't go at that low resolution. So if it's that short, you'll probably be able to do a visual check to see that it's all good. So that is the um, how you do the maths for the conductor resistance. We confirmed our readings. We're happy that the readings correlate with the cable and length that we've got in place. We're happy with that and we're happy with the values that we've got. So what else do we need to check? We need to check that the actual connections are good and tight. We put our connection back at the MET. We, we know that's nice and tight. We need to check the bonding clamp. Now the bonding clamp, you can run your cable in two different ways. You can have a different cable for each service or you can use one cable for both services. So if you've got gas and water, you can use one cable. But the important thing is that this cable isn't cut. It's got to be continuous. So if you're going to do that, if the gas, for example, you'd have to cut out a little bit of insulation and you'd loop it round like this and you connect it so the screw and lug, it's connected to the, the clamp through the screw and lug. So you've got a good, tight, solid connection. This cable isn't cut because if it is cut and this clamp comes loose, you're going to lose your bonding to both services. So you can have it, you can double it up, so you could go into gas and water, but the cable can be cut, it's got to be continuous. Also you need your safety electrical connection, do not remove label on each clamp, and also the main earthing terminal, so people know that that service, it's an important service and don't disconnect it. And it's also check the connection at the clamp if it's a single connection, the best way to do this is crimp a lug on, then you get a good, nice, tight fit. If you just try and connect this, it's quite a thick cable, stranded cable, into this connection there, it quite easily, could quite easily pull it loose. So the best way to connect that is with a, a crimped on lug and screw it down nice and tight. So check your connections are acceptable. Make sure everything is back in place. And once everything is back in place, you can uh, re-energize the installation. And we just need to do your recordings now. Record the test results. Considering the importance of your main protective bonding conductors, there's not a great deal of the electrical installation certificate given over to it. It asks you about your main protective bonding conductors. It asks what material it is, um, the cross-sectional area, if it's got continuity, what it's actually connected to, your water, your gas, oil, whatever. And it asks about the confirmation of protective bonding conductor size and the condition and accessibility of main protective bonding conductor connections and that's about it but that doesn't mean you can't add, you can't add more information you've taken some measurements so let people know what you've taken there's plenty of space on the form and comments or whatever to write this extra information down even if you just write on the back of the certificate you've shown the work that you've done and the diligence that you've, that you've taken and it's useful to know in the future um, and another good thing to do as well, say there might be limitations. If you've been testing your main protective bonding and you haven't been able to find the actual clamp on the gas pipe, for some, for example, you've tested from the um, the disconnected end of the, the main earthing terminal and you can only test to an actual gas pipe, you've got to make a note of that. You would write that in your limitations that the actual bonding clamp can't be found. So don't be afraid to give more information. You can never write too much information. Write down everything you've done. Write down your test results. You've taken the time to do it, so let people know that.